Hi there, another Tarbar Transom uh, thrifty woodworker video. And in this one, we're talking about tool selections, pricing, and the, those kinds of considerations. Very first thing, very first most important thing, eye protection, ear protection. Okay, these are, I believe they were $7 yellow polycarbonate increases contrast vision reduces blue light so if you wear them before bed and that kind of thing it makes it easier to fall asleep full coverage doesn't block too much light does give you full protection also increases your contrast vision great and protective earmuffs i already had these before I started woodworking, I don't remember what they cost. I believe these were in the $12 range. If you're going to be listening to the sound of hammering all day, for hours on end, for days on end, for months on end, you're going to want to have something guarding your hearing. Because once it's gone, it's gone. Hearing never comes back. Next thing, my favorite tool, chisels. I love chisels. They have a lot of uses, and these tools in particular happened to have been extremely cheap. They were either five or six dollars for the set of three. They have metal backed chisels. The fact that they have a cover isn't really necessary. If I were setting these down, I would just flip them around so that the the edge doesn't dig into my table. Having the covers is kind of nice for long-term storage, but not strictly necessary. For chisels that are this cheap, you have to tune them out of the box. They will technically perform, but you want them to perform better than they're going to. Like a lot of other things that we have here. And speaking of sharpening, this is a Speedy Sharp. Now, I added the, the cover to it just because I like having a lot of spare paracord. That is a Speedy Sharp. It is a block of carbide mounted as the sharpening tool. And I do have a video on sharpening with one of these things. You can get... Don't let the fact that it's carbide fool you. They can be very fine precision tools. You just have to know how to handle them. If you remember our video on design principles, this requires a lot more technique to use than other thing, than other sharpening tools like stones, but it can accomplish a lot more because of it. There'll be a video dedicated to those. Next is a hand plane. Important parts here. Driver, driver in the back, knob for pulling in the front, so that you can do different, like, so you can work on the push stroke or on the pull stroke if you need to. This lever right here adjusts the angle of the cutting iron, and this dial right here adjusts the, the advancement of the blade. I can fully disassemble this thing, and that is a hard right angle. So if you were to get close to it, you can use that to sight and see if something is flat. Very handy. I use a jack plane for a lot of my stuff. Now, the next thing is going to be a hammer. And if you're going to have a hammer, you might as well have the other side be an axe. This was modified in a handful of ways. This was a stop to make it just as an added safety measure and to give a nice bit of grip there if I wanted to because where you where you grip on it changes how it performs. I, I left the cover on but I brought the edge back quite a ways there. I made that a lot tighter. There's I'm gonna have a whole video about doing that. And it's a hammer. 
which for a lot of people is going to be the important part. This is a carpenter's axe. From memory, I want to say that was $6. I'll have an insert here. There, that's how much it cost. Now, I wouldn't recommend using the hard hammer on the metal back of the chisel. What I would recommend using instead is a mallet. Now, I went slightly pricier here because I wanted the mallet to do more things. Hard rubber, soft resin. This it, The mallet is so that if you're hammering something, if you're, if you're finishing driving the nails in to something, for example, if you happen to work with nails, and most of the time I don't, you want to be able to hit stuff without it messing up your work. So, mallet, and mallet for the chisels. You can get cheaper rubber mallets for around five, five-ish dollars. Okay. Of the next thing, I'm going to give you two options, and you only need one of the two. A combination square, or a speed square. Now these do different things, which is why I have both of them. The speed square has a lip on it so that you can get it on the, cor on the side of a piece of wood and measure a distance in, but way more importantly than that, to me at least, if you, if you lay it on there you have an instant 45 degrees, but these markings along here, these lowest markings, that's a protractor with no moving parts. You set it on your board, and then you pivot it along this point. And wherever this mark, this set of marks lands on the edge of the board, will create an angle of that measure here. That is incredibly handy. Protractor. Or speed a uh, combination square. It has the forty five degree angle into it, and it's it's lipped there so that you can set that up and measure off of it that way. Or in the reverse. Measured in both types. It has a little notch in the end for a pencil, and because you can adjust it, that means that you can set a depth on it. And the, Close that out, get it, set it on the board, and now this mark, you, the notch will fit a pencil, and you can use that to draw a line, or otherwise make a mark that's a consistent depth in. It also has a level built into it. It's only a level in one direction, because you can, if you need to determine along two axes, you can put it one way then put it the other way. This was $4, this was $8, but I inherited this, so I didn't actually have to pay anything for it. And this was a gift, so <laughs> both of these didn't actually run me anything. Which of these two items you choose is going to be based on what projects you have in mind. If I were choosing now, I would have gone with the speed square first, because as much as I like using this as a measuring tool for, say, set, putting that on the edge of a board and then finding the thickness this way, for as much as I like using that as a measuring tool, there are other ways of accomplishing that task. And this works for me just fine. Files are extremely underrated for all sorts of things. Mostly, mostly this is finishing. When, I, when I'm doing end grain, if my jack plane here is in need of sharpening and can't take shavings from end grain, I can finish it off square with a file. You can get a file in reasonable working condition from a flea market for a dollar. If they're charging more than a dollar, go elsewhere. All files generally work the same. There's 
Well, okay, that's not strictly true. There's an entire video to be done on different kinds of files. This, for example, is a half round file. And it's a double cut file. This is my saw. This is my only hand saw. Because it's cross cut on one side and a rip saw on the other side in the same tool. If I really wanted to, I could disassemble it here, and then there would be two mounting holes, and I could build it into a frame saw. In fact, that's one of my future projects, to, to use to flay boards, those sorts of things. It's also a pull saw, because pull saws are vastly superior to push saws. And that's because when you're pulling on something, it has it's under tension. So it's not going to buckle up on you if it if you're not sawing exactly perfectly. It will just cut. Japanese style saw, way for the better. This was $12. Now, I happen to have lots and lots of knives because I'm a knife person. I have lots of knives on me, in fact. There's there's two. One for my pocket and one for my neck knife. This knife, I happen to have made, and that's a relatively simple process by a stock removal. But that's not what this series is about. The reason that a knife, uh, I have this knife, and these knives, as a woodworking tool is because knives leave finer cut cutting lines for marking things, and those, those cut lines you can take out via other means. Like a card scraper. This card scraper was free because I inherited an old saw that I cannibalized and, and cut a slat out of to make this card scraper. This used to be a piece of saw blade. I believe the, the teeth of it were down here. And this was tuned up with a file and then I turned a burr on it and now it is a card scraper after I got you know the rust off. I'll show you a technique for that. I'll show you a handful of techniques for that. Now, if you need to drill holes, a brace and bit is the way to go. These are far superior to power drills for the most part because power drills run out of batteries. You need to plug them in, you need to charge them, batteries are awful. I get better results from this because of the amount of the pressure to speed ratio is more natural to use with one of these. This one is probably the most expensive thing on the table. This ran me $35. My jack plane over here was $15, and it came with a second plane that I then sold. It was, a, it was a little block plane, and I didn't feel like flattening the foot on it. Now, that seems like a lot of stuff. But I gotta tell you, I didn't get all of this stuff all at once. Like, here's, here's how much money all of that stuff that I've just listed off for your cost. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. Or at least it's a lot to me. But I didn't spend all of that at once. I chose when to get my tools based on the project that was in front of me. When I needed something that required a hammer, then I got a carpenter's axe. When I needed something that required a saw, which was, let's face it, right away, I got a saw. The, th the things that I actually started with, the for me what the minimum stuff was, was the safety gear, the jack plane, the chisel, the sharpening tools I already had because I'm, I've sharpened knives professionally. Okay, that got a little muddled. Let's try that again. I'm gonna, like, magic onto the table just stuff that is in my minimum kit. Jack plane, speed square, saw, chisels, mallet, sharpening tool, protection. This is what I would pick to start with if I had to start again. That's what I would call minimum kit. You can add a ruler to this or a tape measure or something like that, but you could, if you wanted to, get by with just the things that you have right here by technique, transferring marking. Oh, I, I suppose I should add a knife, but you know, there, there's lots of knives. 
you could get by with just this stuff. I did get by with just this stuff for quite a bit. Most of the other things that I have, like the Carpenter's Axe, were, those were added considerably later because of the kinds of projects that I chose to make. Now, different categories of these items are going to have their own discussion video at one point or another, but this I, I've gone on long enough for this already. So uh, the, the next thing that we do is probably going, going to talk about tuning up tools. <laughs>